Okay, thank you. Uh, so welcome to my talk. Uh, I'm Serge Stingvich. I'm a computer scientist uh, working in France. And um, I will do, uh, in fact, two presentations during this conference. So thank you for, the, for inviting me to this conference. I really appreciate it. It's my first time in uh, Argentina, not in uh, South America. I was once in, in Chile, but first time in Argentina. Uh, so thank you very much. So today I will talk a little bit about uh, uh, TensorFlow, so one of the most famous uh, frameworks to do machine learning. And tomorrow there will be another talk about Polymath. So Polymath, uh, I will have more time. I have one hour if I remember. Uh, and Polymath is something that uh, allows you to do computational uh, computing uh, for doing uh, science and mathematics. So today, uh, TensorFlow. So first of all, I will just uh, present myself. So I'm, wor I'm working in an international joint research unit, and I'm working on, on modeling and simulation of complex system. And we are located in different places around the world. Um, uh, unfortunately, not in South America, <laughs> mostly in Africa. So in Morocco, Senegal, Cameroon, and also in uh, Southeast Asia, in Vietnam. So I'm currently located here. I live here in uh, Central Africa, in Cameroon since uh, 2017, and I should be, be there until uh, the end of, of next year. And in fact, we are working with developing countries, especially African countries, to help them uh, focus on uh, what, something that is really important for them. Uh, it's about modeling and simulation of complex systems apply on environmental issues. So this is some of our, what we are doing uh, in this uh, country. So we are doing uh, a lot of things around uh, sustainable development goals. So you see here three uh, sustainable de development goals. So about the good health, uh, sustainable cities, and this one about fisheries. So basically what we are doing is that we are uh, modeling uh, this kind of complex system. And after that, we are doing uh, uh, ma mathematical modeling and computer science modeling. And we can uh, use this kind of models to uh, predict or uh, understand better the, the situation in, in this country. So we are doing a lot of things like that. So uh, recently we use more and more machine learning. Uh, I have uh, one project in Cameroon about uh, discover uh, the, the, the plant growth. So we apply this to cacao uh, trees. So we try to understand how uh, cacao trees growth during his life uh, using machine learning techniques. So we are using more and more this kind of system for, 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 for modeling complex systems. So uh, let's go on my, on my topic. So we'll talk about TensorFlow. I don't know if you know, uh, who don't know about TensorFlow here? Don't know. OK. So basically, it's a general purpose numerical computers, computing library. So it's an open source software uh, that has been originally, originally developed by the people from, from Google since uh, 2015. So it's a big software written in Python. Uh, and most, most of the software is written in C and C++. And Python is just a layer on top of it, uh, this uh, big engine. So it's completely hardware independent, so this is really interesting. That means that you can run the same uh, um, uh, simulation, the same software on CPU and on GPU. So it's completely transparent. So if you have access, or TPU, if you are um, um, working at Google Lab, Lab, for example, you can use TPU, uh, that is a TensorFlow G, uh, a CPU, in fact, uh, that you can use. Uh, so this is something very interesting, and in fact, you can use TensorFlow not only to do machine learning, but in, in fact, you can use it as a, as, a, as a general library to do a lot of processing. If you, have a, if you need to do data analysis, image processing, uh, big data or simulation like, like what we are doing in, in my lab, uh, you can use TensorFlow. In fact, this is not, complete, this is not uh, focusing on uh, machine learning. It's a general purpose library to do uh, uh, computation, in fact. So I will... Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, explain a little bit uh, uh, why a FARO so, uh, should take care about uh, this. Uh, so first of all, it's, uh, it's a multi-platform library. So in fact, you, you can use the same code, almost the same code on, on the different platform. It's a distributed execution. So you can run the, the, the same code transparently. On, I already uh, explained that you can run it on CPU, GPU, etc. And it's a quite a 
it's quite a robust foundation for doing machine learning and uh, using deep learning frameworks. And it's already used in lots of, uh, it's already supported by lots of programming language like C++, Python, etc. So uh, we definitely need to do some things for, for small talk. And I was interested also to be able not only to, to use machine learning uh, algorithm, but also to be able to uh, uh, be able to visualize, to, to see the, uh, this kind of uh, complex system like neural networks. Because most of the time, one of the, one of the big issues of this kind of system is that uh, uh, you build a lot, uh, system with a lot of layers. Uh, for example, if you Google, you, they, they have some examples of system with uh, uh, hundreds of layers, different layers, but it's very difficult to debug, in fact. So we, are, we need something that uh, allows us to, to understand this kind of system. And, and in Faro, we have lots of tools like, to, to do that, like Russell. We have already had a demo from Milton uh, this morning about, uh, about Russell. So this is something that uh, could help us here to understand uh, uh, TensorFlow code, in fact. So this, this was my main motivation for this, for this work and uh, also be able to use that for, for doing uh, simulation of complex systems. So, um, uh, first of all, I will uh, maybe introduce a little bit about uh, what is TensorFlow. So, TensorFlow, basically, you have tensors and flow. Very easy to understand. So, tensors are, in fact, uh, very simple to understand. They are just multi-dimensional arrays. So you have some examples here of, of tensors. So you can have a tensor of rank zero. So it's a, a scalar, so a float, for example. Or an integer, it's a scalar. Uh, if you have a rank of one, it's a vector. So usual vector of numbers. Uh, two, it's a matrix. Three is a tensor of rank three, etc. So you, in fact, you just uh, uh, have a kind of generalization of, the, of the, the idea of matrices to many dim dimensions. And you have something like that. So 1D tensor, the vector, the matrix, the 3D tensor, et cetera, et cetera. So every time you go from one dimension to a, a, a much bigger dimension, you just uh, uh, put this one to 3D tensor. And you have multiple here 3D tensor. And you build the 4D tensor. And after that, you do the same for the uh, 5D uh, tensor, et cetera, et cetera. So you sometimes. For some uh, very uh, elaborate uh, system, you need this kind of, uh, of uh, very big uh, multidimensional arrays. And when you are doing machine learning, I will, I will have no time here to explain how the machine learning uh, algorithm works. But basically, when you are doing machine learnings, you are using lots of uh, matrices uh, operations. So you are using um, uh, linear algebra uh, algorithm. So you, you will use lots of uh, operation like adding matrices, mul multiplying ad matrices, etc. And all these operations are very, very fast uh, on, on TensorFlow. But I just want to emphasize that, in fact, th you can use it for doing something else. For, for, for example, for doing matrices or uh, multiplication. And you are not ob obliged to, to use TensorFlow to, to do only uh, machine learning stuff. So, uh, so I have explained uh, what, what are uh, tensors, now what are flow. Uh, so in fact, uh, in order to compute uh, uh, something with TensorFlow, you need to build nodes. So nodes are basically operation, mathematical operation, but it could be also operation like uh, building a constant or having a, a, a something to log your data. And after that, each of the nodes is connected to another node with nodes with edges. And on, uh, on these edges, you will have some uh, uh, information that will flow from one node to another node, and this, no this, this, kind of, this information will be tensors. Okay? So between the nodes, you have communication edge, edges, and you have tensors that go from one edge to another edge. So you have something like that. So this is an example of what you can build. And basically, when you build machine learning algorithm, you you put a lot of these nodes together, so you have, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, you can build something that is hierarchical. So you build a hierarchy of uh, nodes, and each of these uh, uh, nodes are layer, for example, in a machine learning algorithm. So uh, what we, 
we, we, what we want to do is that we want to, do the, we want to define the data flows with, uh, with Smalltalk. And after that, and this is the, in the, when you are using Python or Java, you are doing the same. In fact, you define the, the data flows in your, in your language. And after that, you compile in memory the, the graph. In fact, uh, th and you, we will see later that this is one of the main problems with this approach, is that you compute a graph in memory. And after that, you have, it's difficult to have access to, to this graph. You, just, you, you can just execute the graph on the memory, and that's it. So the, the, the architecture is like that. In fact, you have uh, 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 kernels, so different kind of kernels. You can run the, the same software on different platforms, inclu including mobile platforms. On top of that, you have operation. So for example, multiplication, addition of matrices, of tensors are operation. So it, uh, this is completely transparent. So the system will choose, depending on the, the software, that, uh, the, the kernels that you have, you can uh, use the same operation on different platforms. And on top of that, you have uh, the execution systems. And you have the, the bindings to so different kind of languages that will uh, use this uh, uh, execution system to, to do the something. OK. So when I, I started this work, so it was uh, more than one year ago, uh, I, was look, I was looking for uh, some code. Uh, and I, find, I found a, a quiz uh, 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 TensorFlow bindings. So I, I start from that. Uh, so thank you for <laughs> Javier and Gerardo for, for doing this very great work. So it was because at the beginning I was expected I have to do everything. But fortunately, there was already some people from the quiz community who have done a, a lot of work. So I reused this work. The, the only problem is that between Quiz and Faro is not, is not the, the same FFI. So FFI is the, I don't know, uh, uh, who, know who don't know about FFI? FFI is the, the way to be able to uh, uh, run C code from uh, your uh, programming language. So uh, I, was, I, I was able, after a lot of pain, <laughs> to, so maybe one month of pain, uh, to, to be able to uh, adapt to what, what they have done uh, to the far FFI. And uh, so it works on, on TensorFlow 2.0. Uh, there was a lot of tests. I also had a, a more tests. So you have a lot of tests to test the platform. And it, more or less, it works. There, there are still some finalization issues because um, it's quite complex. In fact, when you allocate uh, C structures in memory, you, you need to disallocate sometimes the, the structure in the right order. And there are still some, I don't know exactly why, but uh, it's difficult to debug. And I need people who maybe who know more about uh, how the TensorFlow allocate the, the structures. Uh, so uh, yeah, so there are still sometimes some random uh, crash uh, that are very difficult to, to debug for the moment. Uh, since this work, there was also a port, a port of uh, Mariano uh, to uh, Visual, uh, Visual H, Smalltalk. So we have, in fact, uh, three versions of the almost the same. There are some differences between the different platforms. Uh, of the same uh, system on three different, uh, different small talk. So I uh, just want to explain how it works. So it, uh, in fact, many of the uh, TF functionalities are exposed to a C layer. So this is the, uh, so I'm using U, U, uh, UFFI, so it's unif unified foreign function interface. And I, in, fa in fact, I, find, I found a bug inside the, during this work, I, I found a bug inside the UFFI. So basically, what you are, what, how, how it works, you, you take the, the, the C API of, of your software and you try to, okay, to, to build this layer uh, from the C API. So this is just a, one example of the, the API of TensorFlow. This is the, uh, how to, uh, in fact, uh, uh, ask TensorFlow the version of TensorFlow. So you, uh, you have this uh, C ver C. Uh, uh, function here called tf underscore version and it returns a, a string. So this is the what you wrote uh, with the UFFI uh, library and uh, you can use it like that. You ask the, the C, uh, the C uh, interface uh, the version and normally you obtain a, a string that is 2.0.0. Okay, something simple like that. So it's, but this one is very simple but when you are manipulate more complex uh, C structure, it, sometimes it's very difficult to find the bugs because uh, 
you are not uh, passing the, the, the correct pointer to, to something and uh, it crash and it's, it's um, very difficult to, to understand why it crash. You don't have the, the usual debugger that allows you, the usual small talk debugger that allows you to, to understand uh, what happens. Okay, so this, these are some examples. You can build tensor like that. Uh, okay, so you, for example, you can uh, build a tensor from a scalar. You can build tensor from a, a vector or from an, an array of, uh, of values. Um, and from that, you can, okay, compute some ranks if you want. Uh, maybe, I, maybe, maybe I can do a demo. It'd be better if I do a demo. Uh, so I have a, yeah, not this one. Normally I have a, yeah. Is it read, readable? Maybe a bit small. So uh, just want to show you. So for example, you can build this kind of um, tensor. So you see, this is the, in fact, a tensor that is uh, inside the memory. So you see the address of the, the so it, this is no more in the, in the file memory, but this is somewhere in the, in the, in the computer, lib, uh, computer memory. So it's very easy to build tensors, and after that, um, maybe I will switch because I don't have too much time. I will switch to an, some example. Yeah, so first of all, I want to explain that, uh, so, you need to build a graph. So the nodes, uh, the, the, the list of nodes, and the, con the connection between the nodes. So basically, uh, a graph contains a set of operation objects that each uh, node is a, some unit of computation. And uh, in fact, you can, what is really interesting is that you can serialize the graph. Okay? So after you build a very complex system with a lots of layers, you can uh, transform this uh, uh, system as a set of uh, uh, as a file, in fact, and you can share this this file with other uh, TensorFlow platforms. So, and I will show you later that you can download, in fact, some uh, serialized graph from down in Python or I don't know, I don't know the language that they use, and you can, in fact, reload this uh, graph uh, inside the file memory and use it to do some machine learning. So it's, it's very easy after that after you create. Uh, uh, this graph is very easy to exchange because you can serialize very easily this graph and exchange them between platforms. Um, about the operation that you can put in the node, uh, basically you, you, a node has a number of inputs, so between zero and n uh, inputs, so inputs are tensors, and they produce between zero and, and uh, outputs that are tensors also. You, can, you have a, a lot of operations, don't know exactly how much you have operation you can have you, you have in a TensorFlow uh, kernel, but basically it's uh, maybe, maybe around 100, 200, uh, maybe more uh, different kind of operations. So you have the basic uh, uh, linear, uh, linear algebra operation like adding, multiplying, etc. Uh, uh, tensors. Uh, you can transpose. You can inverse. You can also do some kind of reductions. If you have a, a, a tensor that, uh, that, for example, has f f four dimensions, you can cut slice of your tensors to pr produce tensors that are only three dimensions, etc. So you have a lot of operation that you can use on this kind of tensors. And uh, in fact, if you want to do after that machine learning on that, you need to to, to build a, a, an API on top of it. Okay, so. Uh, here, we, we don't have this API. We need to, to do it by hand. So this is something that we are lacking, for, for example, compared to what you can do in Keras. In Keras, this, the, they are using the same. Uh, they are using uh, TensorFlow as a back, by, uh, back end, in fact. But they have an API to, to describe the layers uh, of your uh, neural network. And this is something that we don't have here. So you have to do, if you want to do uh, your network, you have to build everything by, by hand, so it's a little bit annoying. Um, uh, so 
after you have def defined your net, your, your, your graph, in fact, you can uh, execute it. Uh, and you have to build a, a session to execute. And you have to choose if you want to execute it on the CPU or TPU or something else. And you can also the, distribute the ex execution on multiple nodes on uh, multiple devices. And uh, I already, already said, uh, said a few words about that. It's that completely portable. You can um, serialize it and uh, use it in another platform. So it's time for a demo. Uh, OK, something very simple. I just want to compute 3 plus 4, but with TensorFlow and not in, in small talk. OK, so I do something like that. So, so, it, so it's very similar to, to small talk, but it's a bit, bit, bit more complex. So you create a graph. Uh, you create two nodes inside this graph, so C1 and C2, with a uh, constant value. Okay, so 3S tensor, 4S tensor. You do the sum, and you build a session, and you run the session, and uh, in order to obtain a, uh, the, the result, you have to say, okay, I want the sum. Uh, uh, the, the sum will be the, the input, in fact, uh, the, sorry, the, the the, the output of the node that is the sum, I, want, I'm, I am interested by the, the first one, and the first one is indexed as zero, and you obtain a, 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 a tensor, and I just want to print the tensor as numbers. Okay, so normally, if I execute something like that, you have a, yeah, seven, yeah. Uh, okay, maybe it's not really efficient because <laughs> you have to, okay, maybe some, I guess if you do something like that in small talk, it's more efficient than, uh, so. You, you understand how it works like this. So, um, and wh what is interesting here is that uh, I can do something interesting, is that I can have a look uh, to the graph. If I try to inspect the graph, and this is something I, um, I had to the original code, I'm able to use Russell to visualize, in fact, the, the network. So here um, I can see that there is two nodes that are C1 and C2, and uh, I'm using one node that is the addition, uh, that do the addition of C1 and C2, and okay, that's it. So this is very interesting. So this is something I, I had um, maybe in 10, 10 minutes with Russell to the original code. So it's something very easy to do. Maybe we can do a more elaborate uh, visualization, visualization later, but was enough for me at the, for the beginning. So let's try to do something maybe more elaborate. Just want to multiply now two matrices. So basically the, 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 same, the same code. I, I built some uh, tensors. I built some nodes. I'll do the multiplication of both uh, nodes. And you have the, the result. So it's OK. See, it's very, very easy to do. Uh, so, okay, let's try to do something maybe more interesting now. And uh, let's try to do uh, image recognition. So what I have done is I, I, I download um, uh, an existing uh, 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 neural network called MobileNet. It's a neural network that has been trained to recognize around 5,000 different objects. And this is, uh, you see, the... You have here the serialized version of this uh, network, so I don't know exactly uh, the size. It's around uh, 1.7 uh, 1 megabytes, something like that. And it's a, a, a network that is uh, dedicated to run on uh, mobile uh, devices. Okay, so the small, small network. So what I will try to do is I want to recognize, so I will use one image. So uh, I will use this image. Uh, so you know who is it? This woman is very famous because this is the, the woman who built Cobol. So it's Grace Hopper. And so I will use this image. Why this image? Because it's uh, something that is uh, always used as a benchmark for, for machine learning stuff. So I will use this image to, to try to recognize something inside this image. Uh, so I will try to run. And Okay, so in fact, the, the network, so uh, give me uh, many uh, d 
different result. I just uh, ask him to to print the, the five uh, first answer. And so the network C at 81%, a military uniform, so it's quite true. And uh, at 0 0.04% uh, percent a mortar board. I don't know if you know what is a mortar board. It's a, a, a hat that is used at a university. Okay. And uh, after that, uh, there is a 1.0.1 percent of, uh, of seeing a stage. And uh, it's not really a mortar board. In fact, this is more military uh, uh, hat, but OK, so more or less. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so you see uh, how it works. So here, I'm just uh, using, I'm, I don't train a network. I'm just using an existing network. I don't own an existing network. And for this network is able to, maybe we can have a look, because there is a, yeah, there, there is a label files that contains every object that is, uh, this network can understand. Okay, so you have a list here of uh, something like 5,000 objects that has been used to train this network. So in fact, this network use the image as an entry and give me a number, okay, between one and 5,000, and I have this, Try to understand what is what is the, the meaning of this number. Okay. Okay. Um, what I want to do now is I want to be able to visualize the yes. Thank you. I want to visualize the resulting network. We have seen the, the network just by adding two numbers. It was very simple. I want to see the the, the network that is behind this uh, neural network. Okay. So the the graph, the TensorFlow graph. So. So normally, yeah, the graph is here. I will inspect it. Yeah. So it will take some time because uh, to lay out the, the graph because there is a lot of elements inside the graph. Yeah. So this is the, the network. And uh, yeah. Do so you see it's? Uh, <laughs> There are, I don't know exactly, but there are hundreds of nodes. So, and the, the, the problem here is that, uh, yeah, it's very difficult to understand the, this kind of graph. And I, uh, uh, I have one student that is working to, to build a more uh, uh, understandable vi visualization of this kind of graph. Because here, uh, we, we are at the level of TensorFlow. So we, we, we forget everything about the layers. So we need something that uh, allows us to understand the, this kind of system more in terms of layers and not, not only in terms of a, a TensorFlow graph. Okay. Um, I think I have one more demo, but I'm not sure we'll have time to show you. Maybe at the end if we have time. Uh, uh, okay, so there are other machine learning tools. I don't have time to, to, to talk about them. But uh, there are lots of activities around machine learning in, 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 in Smalltalk and in Faro. Uh, I, I think the, uh, after my talk, there will be a presentation uh, about Python Bridge. And uh, Keras Bridge uh, uh, is using Python Bridge to uh, connect Faro to, to Keras. There will be a book uh, about uh, agile artificial intelligence uh, from Alexander uh, Bergel that will be released in 2020. And uh, tomorrow I will uh, uh, show you also uh, what we are doing in Polymath. So we are doing a lot of things about machine learning, especially about automatic differentiation. That is something that is uh, really important in machine learning and also about PCA and uh, visualization that are used in machine learning. So the conclusion of my talk, so this is a, a, a beta version of this uh, uh, TensorFlow bindings for, for Faro. So it's, it's very difficult to debug, and this is one of the major problems with this kind of system. And I have one student that is working on that. So the idea is that, and this is very similar to the previous talk that we have seen, the idea is to be able to wrote directly Smotol code, and from Smotol code, be able to generate the, the, the graph. So we are using AST, in fact, the AST of, of Smalltalk, to generate the, the, the TensorFlow graph, and we want to, to be able to do that uh, transparently, in fact. So this is something we are working on. Uh, there are still some crashes that we, maybe we will fix later. Um, some perspectives about this works. So we want to have more complex visualization. We want to be able to build the DSL on top of that, but it 
takes a lot of time to do that. We want to use uh, TensorFlow bindings for, for also for applications. So for example, for, for polymath, because for polymath, everything is done in pure small talk. So maybe we can replace some of the operation by TensorFlow. And uh, one of the perspectives that we, uh, we should also consider is that we, we should try to, 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 yeah, to share the, 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 the code base between the different small talk. Well, there are some technical details that, uh, allow, that uh, forbid this kind of uh, sharing at the moment, but I, I hope that uh, soon that we'll be able to have the, the same, the same uh, basic platform and build something more elaborate on top. And so this is one of my students in Cameroon, uh, Yvon, and is, this is the guy who is working on uh, be able to transform uh, uh, AST Smalltalk in, uh, uh, in, in TensorFlow uh, uh, graph. And uh, thanks to instantiation uh, and Mariano, we are, uh, they, they, they give us a board, a uh, Jet Nano uh, board to, to do uh, machine learning. And this is very important in Africa because in Africa, uh, the access to the net is uh, very difficult, okay? And most of the students, when they want to do machine learning, they have to use Google Collab, uh, Google Collab or yeah, Google Collab that allows them to, to do more complex machine learning stuff, but you need uh, internet access to do that. So with this kind of system, with this kind, so basically this is a, a, a GPU, and you can do uh, uh, maybe not very complex uh, machine learning stuff, but you can start to do some interesting experiment. And so thanks again uh, for, uh, for this gift. To, so it's helped a, a lot uh, my students to, to do their work. So thank you again. That's it. Questions? I have one. The, the network, neural network that you used was automatically created or the automatically created, uh, you know, the neural network that you used to recognize the objects on the picture. Excuse me? Oh, not yet, but was it trained? Yeah, it was a picture. Uh, okay, a picture. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. The, the weights of the, the network, and I'm just yeah, but load it in my memory and that, use it. Yeah, but how, how was that network built? I don't know. Uh, okay. But okay. By someone no, I, who maybe uh, wrote a Python program or something like that to, okay. to train it and run it on the, yeah, on the, on the computer okay. for maybe for many hours, but uh, okay, I don't, I don't have to, to, to do it again because someone... Uh, and it was, uh, uh, there's a big, large database of pictures. Uh, there are a few actually, and those big database of pictures were used to train these uh, networks where all you need to do is just download the pre-trained graph, serialize, in protobuffer, and then you can just fact, use in it. Fact, uh, in fact, on the internet, you can find a lot of pre-trained models that you can use without uh, having to, to do it by yourself. Cool. So uh, you said that things uh, get very hard when, um, because of the, when the execution goes to TensorFlow engine, and so because you cannot like, uh, debug that. Are there any tools uh, for debugging uh, the execution of, of the graph? Uh, is there any hope uh, to do some layers uh, from Smalltalk to help that uh, debugging process? Or? Yeah. And in fact, the, it's, it's, a, yeah, it's a common, uh, common issue. So the, the people are aware about that. And they, so there are, uh, uh, people have done something called eager mode uh, in Python. So basically, instead of having a big graph of uh, nodes, they, they just fragment the, the, the graph in, in very small units. And they, they put some Python layers between them. So it's, uh, this is something that we uh, uh, want to do uh, also in, in Smalltalk. And People have uh, also built some uh, visualization, like uh, there is something called Tensor, TensorFlow flow board that allows you to uh, debug a little bit your system. So there, there are already some systems, but 
So yeah, it's always a little bit tricky to use. So yeah, so what we want to do is to be able to do it in small talk and uh, be, uh, being able to do it transparently. So you wrote some uh, small talk code and uh, transparently it, it will be, uh, uh, you will generate a TensorFlow graph and so you will have the, at the same time the readability of, uh, of your code because you, you will be able to uh, do it uh, step by step in the debugger and at the same time you, you can run it uh, fast on your, on your, on your on your TensorFlow devices. Yeah.